In a previous video, I reviewed these cases and they performed extremely well. Honestly, the best performing cases I've ever reviewed. You really have to get into liquid cooling or something really crazy before you can find a better cooling solution for your Raspberry Pi. With all that said, I thought, could it be better though? Could it get better than this? So as you see, um, I found what I thought was the best and I had a peak temperature of 34. But then I was watching some videos on does heat sink paste really matter? And people had already reviewed heat sink paste. So I was like, okay, I'll try this Kingpin KPX, this blue crack, this blue thermal grease, and see if it really does hold up to what it advertises. So in this video, we're gonna take that insanely crazy cooling solution we already had and see if we can get shave even more temperature off of it. Then we're gonna overclock our Raspberry Pi and also check the temps with that. And I just have to tell you, as we get into it, it does get better. So in this video, we have a cleaned off CPU with the ice tower case and the esoteric ice tower fan case enclosure and then we have the kingpin cooling so this is rated the best cooling after this video I'll put the video there supposedly the by far the best right nothing comes close so we're gonna give this a shot on the pie and we're gonna compare it to my last video where I use basically just kind of a generic one the, pre the previous heat sink paste that was on there before, which is eh, whatever paste. So we should see some pretty significant props. This stuff was about $15. It comes with your paste and a spreader. Um, with the Raspberry Pi being so small, I don't think you necessarily need a spreader. It is kind of blue in color. And so we're just gonna put a nice droplet on here. I actually had to take quite a bit off here. Pie enclosure on top. After we set it all up here. All right, no thermal paste. I don't know if you can see that, but there's no thermal paste coming out of any of those sides. I doubt you can see through there. So um, next thing, Let's get it back in the case. All right, all buttoned back up. Throw our SD card in. And then we gotta boot her up. Wow, that's crazy. That's insane, that's idle temperature. I'm gonna read the temp and then uh, just run it again because I wanna see if I can get this thing to heat up or not. Twenty seven <laughs> degrees still. Oh my god. I got it up to twenty nine degrees. Last test and then we'll just run the temps to see how first this should bump it up to at least thirty one hopefully. Not hopefully, but, um, and then uh, we'll see how fast it cools down. Oh my God. We got it up to 29 for a second. Don't tell me this, thing. okay, we finally got it. <laughs> we still see a 27, that's ridiculous. That's wild, that's really wild. Um, Okay, and then for my next thing I wanna do is I want to go ahead and overclock and just see what kind of temps we get with that. So we're gonna act we're gonna go up to one two point one gigahertz. Two point one. Okay, it's pretty pretty big overclock. All right, so we are now overclocked, and as you see, we're going a little hot, hotter now, 29 degrees. It's saying our CPU's at 2294 as our max, so let's get ready to rock and roll here. But, <laughs> okay, well, I guess technically it should actually be similar because we're not stressing it. 
Now let's max out all four cores. And it's cool again. So there you have it. Pretty crazy, wild adventure we've been on. I'd just like to point out that all five of these solutions here are amazing. Also, you have other cases out there. And note that you really only need to get your pie to prevent it from going up to 80 degrees. But obviously, the cooler you can get it, the more the more hardcore you can get as far as, you know, there's throwing hours and hours and hours of time on it and maxing out that CPU and GPU. If anything, though, I think that what is uh, conclusive is that this KPX pace does help. So if you don't have this pace and you have a different case or anything, I really actually recommend it. And uh, you're going to save three to four degrees. I think this 31 number is actually... Uh, misleading because if you saw I, I I only got 31 once I got a couple of 30s and I got a ton of 29 degrees on when it wasn't overclocked and so it really I think the number should be closer to 29 but um, even a three degree difference is fairly significant um, especially for such an easy thing to do so highly recommend it there the other thing to consider when you're thinking about heat sinks and all this stuff is the noise I mean you can hear the fan noise when I was running these tests so keep that in mind you might want to upgrade to a quiet fan or get a passive cooling case with this thermal paste on it which would help as well um, all these are really great options remember the Raspberry Pi really doesn't start to get affected till around 80 degrees or so so you don't have to worry too much but these things will prolong the life of your Pi allow you to overcome clock and just give you that ease of mind. So that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.